but I remember the very first dailies I saw of the film, and they, they were dailies from that same tour. So, and, and the accent was so strong, and the mannerisms, the style of speaking was, it, the, there was pauses, and, the, it, and it had a certain awkwardness to the, to the voice, and I was like, wait, what is going on here? And I went back, and I went back to the original Collingswood tour, and I, and I played that for myself, and I looked at them side by side, and she, it, she hit it, ex it's exact. It's exact, the pauses, the, the phrases of, word phrases, the, the posture, the smiling, all on a, on a dot, like perfect. Um, so I mean, she's just, so she's just, you know, she was just tremendous. There's also something about Jackie's story that is uh, very relevant to today. You know, um, they talk about Kennedy being the first president in the television era. Um, and we're now in a different era, which much more advanced media. But so the issues that we start to see there are m much more present today. And those are the issues of what is the relationship between the public and the private? What is the relationship between the person and the persona? So the idea that we are seeing Jackie trying to figure out how to grieve, how to take care of her family, how to be a responsible privately to her own emotions and her own relationships, and at the same time have to have that observed or some facet of that observed by the staff around her, the political machinery around her, the country around her, and the world beyond that, all at the same time, I think that's very relevant. One of the exciting things was that he didn't have that sort of reverence that Americans have for the Kennedys. He's Chilean and doesn't have that sense that they're like his royalty that the way Americans do. And so he was able to approach it in less orthodox ways and be like, it's okay if we make stuff up. We're not trying to make like a documentary. We're making a, a movie and it's an imagination of, of, of who she is. And so we were doing a lot of research and bringing a lot of things in. And I think the, the other, another exciting thing was that he never was like, this is exactly what we're gonna make. It felt like a, a search the whole time. And so everything that we came upon, we could incorporate, you know, he would find, he found the White House tour and he was like, we're going to do the White House tour, you know. I would find a quote from the book and he, from one of the books I was reading and he'd say, okay, let's put that in. So it was this sort of fluid process. We really know Jackie as an icon, as someone we see as a facade of a person, not as a real human. And this movie gives you that insight into her humanity and what, what she felt in a very detailed way, not in any sort of worship, worshiping an idol way. I think it's quite positive about her, but because you see her as a human being, not because you're making her out to be a thing, which of course she was for so many people for so long. It was like the hair, the clothes, the grace, not, not the wit, the soul, the, the humanity. The film covers primarily the days after the assassination through the whole funeral and procession and everything that Jackie organized to memorialize her husband and um, sort of cement his, his legacy as a, as a great president. There's some flashbacks to before everything happened when she's doing the White House tour and um, a few moments during, um, during the, the short presidency of JFK when they hosted parties, concerts, at the, at the White House and, and really sort of made it a cultural hub. But otherwise, it, it really focuses on those, those days of shock and, and mourning for the whole nation.
the White House being built here in Paris was really incredible because, of course, from scratch, completely from scratch, and, and they just, they have the people who do the carvings and the etchings and the, the special kind of painting and the special kind of fabrics that they used. It all came from France, actually. Jackie Kennedy brought in a lot of these artisans to the White House from France. So it was actually appropriate that a lot of the people who still have those techniques and are still able to, to do that are here. So it was, it was just incredible getting to see what they did and the scale of it all. I think it was a great element to have in the film because it allows you to see Jackie before all this tragedy occurs so that it gives you a sense of the before and after of it. Um, and it also allows you to see her in her element and what she's passionate about. She's so aesthetically driven, like she loves, she really has so much passion for beauty and for and for history and and you just see that that real excitement in her when she talks about every piece of furniture and where it came from and it's 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 almost funny because it's it's so particular it's just such a particular thing about her She has this sort of New York accent that's mixed with this finishing school accent. That she says, I rather love this hall. <laughs> you know, the hall is very New York and the rather is almost British. It's a really unusual combination of, of sounds. Jackie and the Reporter, which is Natalie Portman and Billy Crudup, um, was to me the, the most surprising thing about the movie. I loved that. We shot it at the very end. We shot it actually outside of, in, in, a, in a house outside of uh, Washington, D.C. And I had not seen that part of, uh, a Natalie play that part of Jackie before. Because we were in Paris and we were on stage and she had played the grief and she had played everything else and she's Natalie Portman. I think she's our greatest living actress. So everything she did was so incredible. But when she made that turn, we came back, we took a couple months off and then came back and shot there. And I think even Billy Crudup was like, where did this come from? Because there is an inner strength that comes out there and, it, and he says it in the thing, he goes, I, I think you're angry, I think you're, I mean all of that. And I think it's so important that she stood up and said, I'm going to tell the legacy. I'm going to take control of this. And I was a, a journalist and I know what you want from me. I know you want me to cry and I know you want me to do this. And, and she's smoking and she said, and I don't smoke. <laughs> My favorite line. She says, but it's incredible how she takes control of that. And this is all part of the Jackie Kennedy that we will get to know. Because at that point, she says, I'm not gonna be manipulated by the press anymore and by everybody else. I'm not gonna be the victim and I'm not gonna be that Jackie Kennedy. I'm gonna go on and have a life and I'm gonna be the mother of my kids and I'm gonna go on and be strong and do this and I'm gonna have a legacy for my husband. So I, I think it's one of the, the best turns in the movie and I was shocked watching it. Stefan is, is an artist, a complete artist, and I have um, witnessed it up close and watched every moment of it. And between Pablo and, and Stefan, to be able to watch them shoot this and add in 16, the camera movement, uh, you know, uh, in the film, there's so, there's so many tracking shots, it's so beautiful. So many times you're on her back and you have to feel everything that she's going through and just, you know, and not being on her face in that way. And they shot things that I was like, will this ever work? But somehow you're watching on the monitor and you're like, that is beautiful. Pablo's perspective comes as an outsider to this country because he's not an American, he's Chilean. But also, he, he knows something about what he's talking about because he's from a political family. And he knows it's very difficult for a lot of us to, however much we say it to ourselves over and over, to fully understand that Obama and Michelle are people, <laughs> that Hillary and Bill are people, 
that they're humans, right? I mean, it's really that with all the flaws that we have and we hold them up to this other standard that's, you know, we don't hold ourselves up to. So like they're fundamentally human. And I think that that's what you see in the movie is these are just human people. The movie covers the four days after JFK was assassinated. Um, and to me, it's a time that, especially when you look at what's going on now, where America was one. I mean, I think that was a day of mourning for every American, and maybe, I don't know, there might be some people out there now that would say no, but I, I see it as a universal day of mourning. And the thing with grief is it brings people together. So I think of it as a time that the country was incredibly together, you know? And um, she, she gave people that opportunity by sharing her grief. She didn't have to share her grief. She could have gone up to Massachusetts with the kids and locked the doors and never looked back, as they say in the film. But she shared it with, with America, I think, to bring everyone together over it. I think in some ways Bobby had been in the spotlight in the famous family for his entire life and kind of a special person on some level for his entire life that his public persona and private persona are more similar than Jackie's. I think Jackie was someone that was really, um, I mean, naive in some ways. and. I think for her it was a bigger challenge being thrust into such a spotlight than it was for him. And I think it made her create a persona. And I think there are a lot of people you see do that. I mean, um, really an enormous number of the people that we admire that are famous people. Natalie has such unbelievable authenticity in this role. Um, she just does it all so extremely well. I can't, I'm kind of amazed by her throughout the movie. <laughs> um, and I thought also that, yeah, I've known Natalie for a long time and it's really rare that you go to play someone like Jackie and you bring so much of yourself to it. I mean, I see so much of her in the role um, so it's just like this unbelievable marriage of actor and, and part. The look of the film was always really trying to capture the time and capture the period and have a photography and cinematography that, you know, that people might look at it and say, is that real footage? And use some real footage and say, is that new footage that they just shot? And, you know, there are times in the film where, you know, we use real documentary footage and um, there are times you can tell right away and you know that it's documentary footage and there are times where you kind of, you don't know and, and it blends and, and, you know, a lot of films and a lot of filmmakers and a lot of cinematographers try to do that with um, found footage, but I, I've never seen it done quite as well as Stefan did here. When Noah's script first came to us, it was just uh, it was just something that was really different from everything that this movie is. It wasn't a Kennedy film. It wasn't a biopic. It wasn't any of the things that you would think, you know, if someone said to you, hey, we're going to make a movie about Jackie Kennedy the four days after the assassination, you'd say, yeah, okay, you know, and you would go right to thinking biopic or right to thinking Kennedy film, and it was none of those things. It was really a real personal and, and way into... Um, a woman's journey. What made me want to write Jackie uh, is basically, you know, I'm a, I'm a journalist by trade and I'm a lifelong political junkie and I've always been fascinated by the Kennedys and specifically Jackie's role in crafting the mythology of that family, of her husband's administration. and. 
I'd always thought that, like so many women in history, she had never really gotten her proper due. Most times when Jackie Kennedy is portrayed in popular culture, it's through the lens of her style, her elegance, uh, people talk about her marriage, uh, but I never thought that she got the credit that she deserved for being really a genius of marketing, public relations, um, image creation, and myth making. And so I always thought that was ripe territory to explore. The fact that Pablo's from Chile uh, frees him or freed him of a lot of the preconceptions and the baggage perhaps that an American filmmaker might have brought to it. Um, I th when you grow up in this country, you, you are instilled with a certain reverence for the Kennedys. You, you know, a lot of us have been, talk have been told about them since we were kids. Um, you know, I recall as a child, my mother saved the newspapers and magazines from that week when Kennedy was killed, and she would show them to me when I was a kid because it resonated so much with her. Uh, she remembers what that was like being a schoolgirl. Pablo grew up free of all of that, and so he was able to approach it from a truly fresh perspective and really look at Jackie Kennedy not as an American icon but as a woman, and I think that uh, is really one of the keys to the movie's success. When exploring Jackie Kennedy, I, I chose to focus on the week between her husband's assassination and his burial uh, for a number of reasons. First, I'm simply just not a fan of cradle-to-grave biopics. Uh, I always think uh, it's more productive in terms of if you're trying to illuminate who a person was to find a specific moment in their life, uh, especially if it's a moment when they're going through some sort of crucible. I find that that's oftentimes says more about who they were than trying to cover every event uh, in the course of their lifetime. And when I started to do research on Jackie Kennedy, I discovered that she coined the term Camelot mere days after her husband's assassination. And that was sort of the eureka moment for me when I realized that here was a woman who had just sat next to her husband and watched him murdered, uh, was, you know, not to be too gruesome, but covered in his blood, uh, had to go home and console two grief-stricken young children, had to deal with moving out of the only home that she'd known for, 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 for a number of years and contemplate what her life would look like moving forward. And at the same time that she had this presence of mind to recognize that this was her last opportunity to solidify her husband's legacy and that she chose this reference uh, in popular culture, this Camelot reference, I just thought it was extraordinary uh, and that that was all happening again over the course of a single week. Pablo was very clear when he and I first started talking about the script that he did not want to try to present one version of Jackie, one definitive truth of who she was, that our job was to present various facets of her because all human beings are multifaceted and it's hard to say a person is one thing. And, I, and in the film, you see a spiritual damaged side of her when she's talking to the priest. You see a very calculating side of her when she's talking to the journalist. You see her in a you know, previous incarnation when she was first lady in that White House tour selling a certain vision of her husband's uh, administration and selling her love of American history. Um, and, and you see her in private conversations with Nancy, um, with Bobby, uh, and what she was like behind closed doors. And those are all different elements of her. And I think one of the extraordinary things uh, about Natalie's truly exceptional performance is that she's able to capture all those facets of Jackie, and you can sort of see those subtle differences in how she dealt with people, how she spoke. Um, it's a really nuanced portrait. This journalist uh, was, was bringing to the table his impressions of Jackie at the time, which were that she was sort of superficial, and he does a, a, a wonderful job in the film of uh, describing this uh, as he cuts again and again to her uh, special where she's showing how she redecor redecorated the White House and how the intelligentsia at the time and uh, journalism um, really disregarded her uh, as an unimportant figure um, in uh, a presidency that didn't last for very long. And so he said, I want you to bring that to it. And I'm like, that's not the Jackie Kennedy that we know growing up. And he said, yeah, but we have to get to the point. We want this movie to be an opportunity to explore the depth of her strength. Um, and if we get to witness it in the context of somebody who's um, 
looking at her with dubious eyes, um, we get a real opportunity for that. In many respects, they're speaking in code to one another. They want to uh, sniff out. He wants to know why he's there. She wants to know if he's going to play along. Um, and they're both uh, powerful, impressive people who um, think they can probably work over the other one. So it's an opportunity to um, play in those silences um, and in the kind of benign questioning how far each of them are going to be able to exert some control. And uh, what you see again and again throughout the course of it is that Jackie is really deeply in control and ultimately the journalist is won over by that. It's a crucial part to understanding the Jackie story as they're telling it, which is that she is not a, an icon. She, she was a woman and uh, an actual person who had to exist through these moments. And these moments are real. The blood on her clothes was real. The blood on her face and hair was real. The fragments of skull that she had to try to piece together with her hands were real. And uh, the film is, uh, I think, really extraordinary in exploring that. There were many times when we were playing these scenes that I was sort of taken out of it um, at, at, as a, just as an actor, admiring uh, the, um, I'm trying to think of a non-assy way of saying this, but it's like the proficiency of her artistry. It, it's one thing to be caught up in the characterization, uh, which is really great as an actor, because then you get to play and you're not, you know, kind of fighting against, um, somebody's work who doesn't meet up with your expectations of what the character is supposed to be. But when somebody is so possessed by that character and their work is so refined, um, you get to be taken away by it. I have a lot of patriotism for my people, for my country, of course. And, and I'm not, I don't have that passion for for this country's patriotism, for the flag, you know, I just, I look at it like, like any other country, you know. Um, so I, one of the things that I wanted to understand and sort of feel on the process, and I keep asking Noah to do that, is to make everything in a way that we could all relate to it, that you don't have to necessarily be American, so don't assume anything. So we had to clarify things in order that I could understand it. That probably that helps for, for more people to, to get it as well. Like the Camelot thing, the whole Camelot myth. I didn't get it. It was like I was, I was reading about it and, and, and I felt that, this, that, it, you know, that we should not assume anything. So we needed to tell the story entirely so people could really understand what was this camera thing about. Because when I got it, I was very moved and I thought it was brilliant and interesting. Natalie has something that I, I think is essential on, 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 on acting, on performing, which is mystery. And, and if you look at Jackie Kennedy, I think she was probably the most, you know, unknown of the known people of the 20th century. And there's a ton of biographies. There's an incredible amount of writing ideas. But, but if you really look at her, it's something that you will never get. There's, if there's anyone that I would consider as mysterious in, on earth, and especially in the last century, is Jackie Kennedy. And I think that, of course, you needed Natalie's elegance, sophistication, intelligence, sensibility. But 
to me also was very important to have that mystery. And I, I think Natalie has that. What I knew about Jackie Kennedy was just superficial. It was just like this woman so concerned about the fashion and, and, and the design, the style, and like the fabrics, you know, and I was there. And, and, and she was like the first lady. She was like next to him, you know. And then when you sort of change the point of view and, and dig into who she really was, you understand how sophisticated, smart, educated woman she was. It was an incredible effort from, from Jean Gavas, I think. What he did in, in the rebuilding that White House was, was amazing. I remember when, when I first time walked in and the set was finished, I thought it was shocking. Because I'll tell you something that is interesting. When, when Jackie Kennedy re did the restoration of the White House, she hired, among other people, one French designer. So that designer brought a lot of fabrics and things and materials from France to restore and to sort of decorate the White House. So when Jean Rabas got involved, he and, 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 Ma and Madeleine Fontaine as well, our costume designer, went to the companies who actually made those uh, fabrics for Jackie Kennedy in the 60s. In terms of directing the actors, I, was, I, I did one specific method or idea with Natalie and something very different with all the other actors. I try to be very specific with all the other actors, with, with, with Greta, with Billy, with John, with Peter. Very specific instructions, very specific movements. Try to do this, try to do that. Try, try, I try to control as much as possible what they were doing. And then Natalie, once she got it, which was, was very fast, I have to say, I didn't push her that much or in, in that direction, that one. I just created circumstances where she could behave and, and move. And, and so it's different, the approach in terms of my directing to, to them. The main question is whose legacy was she building? Was JFK legacy? Was her own legacy? Was the family legacy? And I think it's a little bit of everything. Um, uh, we start thinking that it's everything is about JFK, but no, it's about her. It's very challenging doing a, a, a movie about the, the sadness, you know, and how can you create and can you t how can you tell a story where an audience finally will go home with the feeling that life is something beautiful to live. The question of why Natalie, it, it's a very hard question. You don't know if anyone can do it. It's always the, the hardest thing about biopics is, especially when you're dealing with someone iconic that people have a sense of. And it, when it works, you have think you know, when most people think of Mahatma Gandhi, they think of Sir Ben Kingsley. But that's very, very rare when that happens, when it's, it's someone who's, you know, videotaped and captured really well in the 20th century. How do you, how do you uh, take on a role where the movie star sort of disapp disappears into this iconic person. So that was always the fear I had. Is it possible to do? And for me, the great moment in the process of this filmmaking was, you know, five, ten minutes into watching one of the cuts, sort of forgetting I was watching Natalie. And she somehow, through her magic and voodoo, was able to sort of disappear into this role and by the end, you sort of, you just, you kind of forget that, um, that you're here in the 21st century watching something that happened so many years ago.
It was clear when I saw the club that he was on his on the path becoming a true master. You know, his the films he had made up to that point were all extremely well done, and uh, he was just able to really. Um, he can just focus on characters that you don't immediately connect with and uh, make them make you feel deeply for them, which is really what is one of the great things about filmmaking. And he's just masterful with that skill. So taking someone like Jackie, who you could connect with, I just could only imagine what, how deep he could get into her character and her behavior.